Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 10.6 equations and identities. 10.6 represents Chapter 10, Section 6 of the Pearson A-Level Maths Pure Maths Year 1 textbook. Let's have a look at the key facts of this section. There are two major identities. The first one is sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is identical to 1. This is true for any theta. It is true for power 2 only. The second identity is tan theta is identical to sine theta over cos theta. This is true for any theta and it is true for any power. These are the key facts of 10.6 equations and identities. I'll be implementing these key facts within two exam style questions. Let's have a look at exam style question one. Find all the values of x in the interval x is more than or equal to zero but less than 360 degrees for which nine cos squared x minus 11 cos x plus three sine squared x is equal to zero, giving your answers to one decimal place. Let's have a look at the solution to exam style question one. Ladies and gents, I'm going to start by writing the trigonometric equation. So I've got 9 cos squared x minus 11 cos x plus 3 sine squared x equals 0. Next, I'm going to underline the non-squared term. So the non-squared term in this equation is the minus 11 cos x. So what we want to do is rewrite this entire equation in terms of cosine. We have to eliminate the sine. So in particular, we're going to eliminate the sine squared x. We know that sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So now I can make sine squared x the subject. So if I do this, I get sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cos squared x. So I'm going to replace the sine squared x with 1 minus cos squared x. I've got 9 cos squared x minus 11 cos x plus 3 in bracket 1 minus cos squared x this has to equal 0 so now I'm going to expand the bracket and so I've got 9 cos squared x minus 11 cos x plus 3 minus 3 cos squared x equal to 0 if I simplify this I get 6 cos squared x minus 11 cos x plus 3 equal 0 Ladies and gents, I've generated a quadratic trigonometric equation. To work out the solutions of cos x, I can apply the quadratic formula. So I know that cos x is given by minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So over here we have that a is equal to 6, b is equal to minus 11 and c is equal to 3. I can substitute this into the quadratic formula and if I do this I'll get two solutions for cos x. Ladies and gents the two solutions are 3 over 2 and 1 over 3. Now 3 over 2 is basically 1.5. We know that cos x is more than or equal to minus 1 but less than or equal to 1. For this reason cos x cannot equal 3 over 2 for any x, which means that uh, cos x equal 3 over 2 has no solutions, or you could say has no real solutions. Let's move on to the next equation, which is cos x equal 1 over 3. Now we know that 1 over 3 is between minus 1 and 1. So this one will have a solution. I'm going to solve it. So the first solution is obtained by taking cos inverse of a third. So cos inverse of a third is equal to 70.5 degrees to one decimal place. Now to work out the other solution in this particular interval, I need to draw a cos diagram. So here is my cos diagram. We've got that cosine is positive all is positive, sine is positive, tan is positive, zero degrees. If we go anti-clockwise, we are measuring positive angles. Okay, so I'm going to be going anti-clockwise because we are solving for x is more than or equal zero, but less than 360. So I've got 90 over here, 180, 270, and 360. Cos x is equal to a third, which is a positive value. So cosine is positive in the all quadrant 
and in the cosine quadrant. The first solution starting at zero degrees going anti-clockwise hitting this line, ladies and gents, it is the principal solution 70.5 degrees. Okay, so the acute angle with the horizontal is going to be 70.5 degrees. Now this acute angle is going to help me calculate the second positive solution. So starting at zero, I need to go anti-clockwise until I hit the second line. So that solution there is my second solution. It is given by 360 degrees take away 70.5 degrees. So that would give me 289.5 degrees. Okay, so therefore, the complete solution to this particular trigonometric equation um, are x equal 70.5 degrees and 289.5 degrees to one decimal place. That there, ladies and gents, completes exam style question one. Moving on to exam style question two. Part A, show that the equation 3 sine squared x plus 7 sine x equal cos squared x minus 4 can be written in the form 4 sine squared x plus 7 sine x plus 3 equal to 0. Let's have a look at the solution to part A. The first step is to write down the trigonometric equation. So we have part A, 3 sine squared x plus 7 sine x is equal to cos squared x minus 4. The next step is to underline the non-square trigonometric term. So the non-squared trigonometric term is a 7 sine x. It's a sine term which indicates that this entire equation has to be expressed in terms of sine. This means that we have to eliminate the cos squared x. We can use the identity sine squared x plus cos squared x equal 1 to rearrange it and make cos squared x the subject. So we've got cos squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. We can now replace the cos squared x with 1 minus sine squared x. So we have 3 sine squared x plus 7 sine x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x minus 4. Take the minus sine squared x to the left hand side. So 3 sine squared x plus sine squared x is 4 sine squared x plus 7 sine x. 1 minus 4 is minus 3. Take it to the left hand side. It becomes positive 3 equal to 0. So that there is what we needed in part A. Moving on to part B of the question. Hence, solve for x is more than or equal to 0 but less than 360 degrees. 3 sine squared x plus 7 sine x equal cos squared x minus 4. Giving your answers to one decimal place where appropriate. So let's have a look at the solution to part B. The word hence means that we have to refer back to our answer in part A. So ladies and gents, solving this particular trigonometric equation is the same as solving this trigonometric equation. So we're going to be solving 4 sine squared x plus 7 sine x plus 3 equal to 0. This is a quadratic trigonometric equation, so we can apply the quadratic formula to find the solutions for sine x. So sine x is given by minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So over here we've got a equal 4, b equal 7, c equal 3. If I substitute the a, b and c into the quadratic formula, I get two solutions for sine x. I've got sine x is equal to minus 3 over 4, sine x is equal to minus 1. Okay, so minus 3 over 4 is in between minus 1 and 1, and we know that minus 1 is within that interval, so both of these equations have solutions. Let's start by solving sine x equal minus 1. We can quickly solve this by sketching the graph of y equals sine x in this particular interval. So here is my graph. Here's a sine graph, so we've got 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. Maximum 1, minimum minus 1. Okay, so we want to work out the value of x for which sine x is equal negative 1. 
So sine x is equal negative 1 for x is equal 270 degrees. Okay, so that there's a solution of sine x equal minus 1 in this particular interval. Now we're going to solve sine x equal minus 3 over 4. We can use the cost diagram. Start off by circling the minus 3 over 4. Okay, so that is negative. Right, now to work out x, the principal solution, we can take sine inverse of minus 3 over 4. So sine inverse of minus 3 over 4 is equal to minus 48.6 degrees to one decimal place. To find all the other solutions, we now need to draw a cost diagram. So here is my cost diagram. Cosine is positive, all is positive, sine is positive, tan is positive. We're solving for 0 to 360, so starting at 0, we're going to go anti-clockwise. We've got 90, 180, 270, and 360. Sine x is negative in the following two quadrants, in the tan quadrant and in the cosine quadrant. Okay, now if I go clockwise, I know that I'm measuring negative angles. So that part there will be minus 90. The minus 48.6 is this particular solution. So you go until you hit that line, which is minus 48.6. The acute angle with the horizontal, basically, ladies and gents, has to be the positive of that. So it's 48.6. And by symmetry, we also have 48.6 here. Right, we are interested in the positive solutions. Basically, x is more than or equal to 0, but less than 360 degrees. So the first positive solution starting at 0, going anti-clockwise, is this one over here. That is given by 180 degrees plus 48.6 degrees, which is 228.6 degrees. The second positive solution is given by starting at 0, going anti-clockwise until you hit the second line. So that would be 360 take away 48.6 degrees. This is equal to 311.4 degrees. Okay, therefore, the complete solutions for x for this trigonometric equation, which is the same as this trigonometric equation here, ladies and gents, it will be 228.6 degrees, 311.4 degrees both of them rounded to one decimal place. And we also have the 270 degrees. We neglect the minus 48.6 degrees because that falls outside the interval. This completes exam style question two and this teaching video 10.6 equations and identities. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. Turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.